Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. In this video, we will show you how to install and set up Microsoft SQL Server on your desktop. We will cover several topics with everything you will need to know in order to get started with SQL Server. We will be selecting the free developer version. You can also install the full paid version or the express version from here. Here we have listed some reasons you may choose SQL Server over some of the other relational database options. If your data is relational, or you plan to create complex queries and reports, SQL Server will integrate more closely with .NET, Windows, and Azure. It also has high availability and scalability. It's optimal for OLTP, and it has near real-time capability. These are some reasons for choosing a different database solution. SQL Server is not intended for non-relational data or time series, graph, and spatial data. If you have a mix of structured and unstructured or big data and need analytics, you would use Hadoop. If you will mainly use batch processing, this is not a good solution. In this video, we will also be covering installation, including system requirements, step-by-step -step installation, configuration options, and troubleshooting some common issues. Then we will cover some common setup tasks using SSMS. These tasks include connecting to the server, adding users and admins, creating databases and tables, adding primary keys, adding data into tables, and querying data from those tables. We will also be covering some basic SQL commands in SQL Server. Here are some security issues to keep in mind. Most of these will apply to any database you choose. We have included some mitigation techniques for each, but won't cover most of these in detail. These are topics for another video. Here are some other things to consider. These topics are too complex to include in this beginner's level video. We will be covering these in more advanced level videos in the future. Stay tuned for those. Okay, let's get started. Here, we will teach you how to install and initially set up Microsoft SQL Server. We should check the list of requirements before installing. Here are the hardware requirements from the Microsoft website. The main ones to pay attention to are the minimum available disk space of 6 gigs and 4 gigs of memory. And here are the software requirements. Pay attention to the compatible OS versions. We start by searching for the install file using the search string. We select the link for downloads. You can see several downloads available here. We will be covering some of these in future videos. For now, scroll down to the free developer edition. This one includes all the features of the paid full version, but limited to test and dev type environments. Express is a production level database, but since it is also a free version, it is limited in features. Click on download now and wait for the download to finish. The download is only four megabytes in size. This is only downloading the installation executable. The application files will be downloaded in the next few steps. After clicking on the .exe file in the downloads directory, we will be selecting the custom installation type so we can see details on what is being installed. Basic will download and install only the basic features and Download Media will only download the entire install file to your local hard drive for installing later. We need to select a media location. You should select a location that the installation can access. The download size is 1.1 gig. Click on Install. This will start the full download. FYI, SQL Server is also available for installing on Linux. You can use this link to access that version. You can view the requirements again here and view the security documentation. This tab has other items for installing tools that are useful for working with SQL Server. There are other menu items for installing, maintenance, tools, resources, and advanced along with the options item. We will be covering some of these topics in more advanced videos. The options item selects the directory to install the installation files. Now, go back to installation and select the top item, new installation. This will start an installation wizard to simplify things. We are selecting the developer version. 
You could also select the evaluation full version or the express version. We are installing locally and don't have a paid license, so we don't select the other two options here. Accept the license. You can download and read it later. Microsoft does a validation check here to catch possible problems later. You can select to automatically install and apply patches or updates with newer versions, or you can choose to handle this manually. There are a few status screens to show you the progress. You may need to change the firewall settings if you plan to access this server from a remote location. We are installing and running locally, so the firewall doesn't need to be changed yet. Here are some details on how you would change the firewall if necessary. For demonstration purposes, we are copying these two commands to run in a PowerShell window. We will run this as an administrator. Once they ran successfully, we can continue. We deselect the Azure setting here. We are only setting up the server to use this locally. If you have an Azure account and you want to access this database from Azure, you would leave this as selected and fill out the form. For features, we are selecting everything except Polybase. You can see the disk base needed on the right. We usually use replication and may be interested in using the machine learning functions. We may also want to search our database using semantic search and like to have the included data quality features. You can see details on each feature in the upper right. The options we selected will use another three gigs. You can also change the location of the application here. After clicking next, you can select the instance name for your server. Click next. Here are all the services and account names that we will be setting up. We select mix mode, that way we can log into the database using our desktop login or using an SQL Server account that we will set up later. Set up the password for the default account and add my login account as an admin here. Click next. We will be using tabular mode instead of multidimensional mode. You would select multidimensional if you wanted to use cube structures in your database. We will be using a normal structure. Add our account here also. We can change our data, backup, temp, and log directories here. Click Next. We will use the default port here. You may want to change this for security purposes. We don't have a current SSL certificate to use, so we will need to create one. The wizard will take care of this for us. Click Next. We will copy the endpoint. We may need this if we write an application that needs access to this database later. Our master and worker are on the same machine, so we won't need this option. Click Next and verify your selections. There is also a .ini file that contains this information. You can refer to it later. Click Install. Installing in our case took several minutes. There is a log file created with details on the installation. You may need this if there are any errors. In our case, everything succeeded. We can continue. Now we will install SSMS to manage our new database. Click on the link to open the installation web page. Scroll down and click on the download SSMS 20.2 link. Download and click on the .exe file when it is finished. You can change the location of the application here. Click on install. Several applications will be installed. Once setup is complete, click close. Click Run and look for SQL Server Management Studio 20. Click this item to open SSMS. We will be using SSMS to verify our database was installed and is running correctly. First, you will see a screen for connecting to a database. Our database that we installed today is already filled out. No need to select the server name here. We set up Windows Authentication earlier. We will use that here. Once you set up some admins and users, we suggest using that option instead of Windows Authentication. We are not using a server certificate, so we leave this blank. Click on Connect. SSMS opens up. Select the Connect dropdown, then verify the connection settings look OK. Nothing amiss here. Go back to Login and Connect. Click on Databases to expand. You will see System Databases and Snapshots listed here. We previously installed a database named Product Database. It will also show up here. Expand our database and tables. You will see two tables listed. Click on New Query to open a query window. 
We can select from our table and order by one of the columns. Notice that we use bracket formatting to account for any database objects that contain spaces. We can view database objects such as primary keys for one of our tables. And we can view the SQL to build that key. Looks like the database was set up and is running successfully. Now we will show you how to create a new user account to use for logging in or for application connections. First, we create a login account with a password. Then we create a user account for that login and grant some permissions for our product database. We can verify that these accounts were created by running the server principles query shown here. Now we will view the permissions for that account. You see we can connect and run the four basic commands on this database. Finally, we drop that account. We can see that the new account no longer exists. Okay, that's all for today. We covered a lot of information today, but there is still much more information to be covered. To learn more about SQL Server and databases in general, keep checking back for new videos. Thank you for watching our video. Comments and suggestions are always welcome. See you next time.